Coming up on All About Android, we're going to talk all about uh, the Ukrainian black market for Pixel 3 phones. Really weird story there. Magic Leap apparently has Android bones. Lenovo has a bunch of budget tablets that you can look at. LG has an Android One phone called the LG G7 One. And your emails and a whole lot more coming up next on All About Android. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by WordPress. Reach more customers when you build your business website on WordPress.com. Plans start at just $4 a month. Get 15% off any new plan at WordPress.com slash All About Android. And by DigitalOcean, the easiest cloud platform to deploy, manage, and scale applications. Over 150,000 businesses rely on DigitalOcean to remove infrastructure friction and deliver industry-leading price performance. Sign up today and receive a free $100 credit at do.co slash Android. And by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans, introducing Rate Shield Approval. If you're in the market to buy a home, Rate Shield Approval locks up your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. It's a real game changer. You can learn more and get started at rocketmortgage.com slash Android. Hello and welcome to All About Android, episode 384, recorded on Tuesday, August 28th, 2018, where your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I promise to wear my tracksuit. I'm Florence Ion. <laughs> and I'm in my new tracksuit. It's either a tracksuit or it's a hacker suit. You look like you it's might a be a hacker. Suit. It, it's a You know it's what? A it's suit. a writing suit because all I do in it is write. Um, it's too comfy. It's too yeah. warm. Hey, it, This was not made for summer. Okay. But is it is it summery? Like is it too too warm for right now? Do it's you think? before. Like, it's like I need to wear it in the mountains and uh, have like snow bunny boots. And it's, good, it's, it's you know it's a it's a good thing you're not here in New York City because it, it is. Uh, I think the real feel today was 99. Oh. So, yeah, it was bad. Yeah, don't so, don't wear your tracksuit in New York City. Don't in come August. here with your velour. <laughs> velour in the oh, Bay no, Area. Oh no, I never do that. The last thing I need is to be pelted by New Yorkers <laughs> in my velour. Oh. I don't want to be pelted by anything. Not even an Oreo cookie. <laughs> Not even a wasabi Oreo cookie. Don't don't throw Listen, your wasabi Oreo cookies at me. We have to look behind us. We're moving on from Oreos. We've broken up. <laughs> it's the really only hard. Thing we can do is move on, not think about them, and just start thinking about pie. That's all we can do. It's really hard, though, Ron. For every every single week of this last year, we ate Oreos. It's it's hard to let it go. Oh, I know. My my coworkers at work are uh, are like, what's the what's the Oreo flavor going to be this week? And I was like, nothing. It's over. <laughs> that's the, that's you ruined it for your coworkers. I did. Your poor coworkers. <laughs> I told them, I told them to go blame go blame Sundar. It's See, not my fault. Apparently, blame Google. Apparently, <laughs> we were onto something because. Like, I, I definitely saw a decent amount of feedback over the course of the last year of people that hated the fact that we were eating anything on the show, and that's why we moved it to the end and everything. But I got to tell you, so many people, like, this is, like, top of mind when they talk to you. They're like, oh, and what, you know, what Oreo, or, you know, my kids, obviously, they have to live with me, so, and they, they get something yeah. out of the deal because I bring a cookie to them. They ask, or people on Twitter, like, authentically, genuinely want to know, like, what we're eating this week. Like, we've set this standard that we have to eat stuff on the show now. It's a hard yeah. standard to, to match up to. It's a tough standard. Yeah. Uh, instead, <laughs> we're going to deliver, instead of delivering food to you, we're going to deliver you news. But before we do, mm -hmm. just a quick reminder, you can subscribe, twit.tv slash AAA. Also, I should mention, last week we played a, a breaking news bumper. We kind of unveiled it. Uh, hopefully there's some breaking news today so we can play it again. Uh, <laughs> but I do want to throw out just a thank you because I couldn't remember his name during the show and I forgot to dive into it. Anthony Kelly is the gentleman in Hong Kong who gave us the idea for that particular breaking news bumper. So Anthony, thank you for your work and your service to All About Android. Well, we really and I think it. I think as we're also reflecting on last week's episode, Tyler Hilliard, uh, who did the awesome projections of the oh, operating yes. systems graph. That's right. Um, chimed in. Actually, I just put his tweet in the, uh, his Twitter post in the, chat there if you want to see that victor to throw up there the dark chat. uh but what i thought was interesting uh 
was it, it was that they were projections and I was right. So there you go. Oh, thank you for <laughs> remembering to put that in there because I, I, I forgot about that. I did see that. And he yeah. said, thanks for the shout out. Yes, those were projections. He said, I've labeled them better for next time. <laughs> thank you, Tyler, for yep. doing all this awesome work. I mean, it just looks amazing. He did a great job with this. It's, it's, an, it's a tool can that we, anyone can use. So yeah. I was going to say, can we just appreciate that that basically looks like the digital well-being graph, the one I that know. tells me I spend way too much time <laughs> in social media apps <laughs> and browsing Twitter through Chrome. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's giving me, I have a little bit of, uh, you know, I've been really playing with the digital well-being and Android Pie. So this is... Way to, way to, way to make Oreos uh, and Pie's uh, fragmentation question about yourself. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, don't we all when we're using <laughs> digital well-being tools and looking at the pie and... Realizing we you know, spend too much time reading news. One, the first step is velour tracksuits. The next step is digital well-being problems. That's that's what they say. <laughs> two hundred seventy exactly times. Two hundred seventy <laughs> times is how often I unlock my or how many messages I receive or notifications I get in a five-hour period. What? And apparently, I unlock my phone over eighty times. Holy cow! In like a five-hour period. I remember yeah. when smartphones first came out. A friend of mine. What are doing? Um, a, fr a friend of mine, a fellow podcaster, Merlin Mann, who you know was a long, long time history with Twit. Uh, he had a uh, great idea that he wanted to make an app that just would uh, all you could do was unlock your phone and tap the app, and that's all you had to do, because that's all we were just doing. To we were just, that, just, just to get all, that, all, yeah, just to get that satisfaction. Yeah, just like <laughs> just to just to tap a target, you know, just to say. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about that right. Was, that was, that was ten years ago. That was uh, I remember he made that joke in like oh seven. So yeah, geez. when that when that need was just developing, and now it's yep. like now it's enhanced over the years. And yep. Oof. Yes. Hey, right. uh, why don't we talk about some news, Victor? Let's do it. Another thing to help enhance your well-being in your velour tracksuit is Android News. Mm. That'll enhance it. I think that's step three for Ron. <laughs> okay, it'll be a while. Yeah. Step three go. is a ways away, Ron. I'm planning to bring Ron there with me. So the lid nice. is off on the Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL, apparently, no maybe, kidding. possibly. No really, let's just talk about the fact that a Ukrainian based company apparently got a hold of a number of stolen Pixel 3 XLs, which you may have seen surfacing across the internet this last week because it's definitely. It's definitely been a bustle in my Twitter feed. So apparently this Ukrainian-based company was selling uh, selling these units for 2,000 US dollars a pop via an elaborate telegram setup that included a pickup in London, England. Isn't that fun? A nice visit to jolly old England to pick up a faux phone. No word on how many units they had for sale, but it seems to have been a lot just based off of what is tracking on the internet um all uniform in the configuration and color of devices sold you know full reviews were popping up in a number of russian and ukrainian sites alleging this to be like the real thing there were high quality video unboxings about this sort of thing and i know some you know i, I did see some news sources pick it up as uh you know hot stuff um there are already photo shootouts using the unit to take pictures you know because that's the thing that we're definitely looking at now in these phones and uh, all aspects have been revealed, including full packaging, which really lent to the credence of the idea that these were the real thing. What but do you think? I'm, I'm detecting a little skepticism on your part. Do you think these are the real thing or not? What do you, what do you oh, think? I don't think they're the real thing. No, you, I think, you don't think these are the real thing. No, I don't. Wow. I don't. Interesting. God, I don't how, understand. how could they not be? I don't have like I guess I don't have a very good reason for why I don't think they're fake. Other than that, I do not believe well, that you don't think they're real. Yeah, yeah. I just I don't believe that this Ukrainian site was. I, it just if first of all, it feels too far from like where the phones are made. Just to be in all honesty, like how do they get from China to Ukraine? Well, the same um, way they get from China to here. Okay, yeah, I get it through a box, but <laughs> well, no, but I mean, like the, the distance from China to Ukraine is no different than the distance to China. Like it's, it's true, it's, it's true, but I don't know. It just okay. I'm making that up, but for in all actuality, um, I mean, they, if these are fake, they they're very. I mean, well, I don't know. That team so pixel elaborate. thing looks weird. 
I mean, but but I was going to say some of them is a very elaborate fakery. I mean, even down to the Google Mini, the Google Home Mini, like that's a nice touch. It's yeah. Well, well, it is a nice touch. But anybody could add that in there. Okay, but yeah. but I mean. but if it's fake, it's very well orchestrated. Yeah. Why? Why? What what is the point? Views on YouTube? If so, yes. this is a. I mean, this is a long ways to go for a couple a hundred thousand time. views on YouTube. <laughs> I did. I did. I did I, and I'm not saying that these are real. Like, no one really knows. It's very bizarre. If these are real, this has to go down in one of one of the biggest kind of, like, pre-announcement leaks ever. Because, I mean, like you said, the lid is off on this sucker. If this is real, we literally know everything about this phone. And Right. No, this, this is a leak unlike we've ever seen before. Right? Feels like, that like, way. True. I mean, it's it's on par with the uh, with the Apple iPhone that was discovered in the bar well in advance of you know the release, where it was like, and I mean that was probably a step further because that was a prototype unit, and you know they were going up against Apple, and that's <laughs> you don't want to go up against Apple. What's weird here is that we're not hearing. Are we hearing anything from Google about this? There's no takedowns on this device. On, no. on the right. videos on these devices. Would Google do that if it was legitimate? I'm not sure. But we're not really hearing very much from Google. And I don't know. I would imagine if, if these were fakes. Well, I don't know. I, it's so confusing. It's so confusing, <laughs> it's, this whole situation. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a great point. Because if they order a takedown, that va that, verif that, right. that validates them, right? right? And if they haven't done that, that does that, does that disvalidate them? And or are they thinking, okay, well, if we do that, that'll tip our hand, so let's just leave it be and ignore it. Yeah. I don't know. This is a it's lot a of components to um, to fake as well. Like, it's not just the phone. It's also the the buds, the, um, what are they called? The, you, you've got the wireless ones, the, uh, yeah, the, the air, Pixel the, Buds. The, the air, yeah, the Pixel Buds, yeah. But these are the wired Pixel Buds, supposedly, that are included in the box. So if they're faking this, they faked top to bottom, including a version of Android that looks exactly like Pi, you know, uh, I mean, they, they faked so many different aspects of this. Uh, that just, I find it really hard to to believe, but anything's possible, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't believe I just, it. I yeah. mean, I don't, and, and not only that, but like $2,000, it just seems, you know, I get it trying to make money off a leak, but it just seems like too good to be true. It just seems too good to be true. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's that, my was, skepticism for you. I'm sorry, good, that's that where I'm at. No, don't be sorry. I, I, I love it because I hadn't even considered it. I, like I, I just assumed it was real. Well, it's well, just, well this is it, this is probably. Just th we're, go ahead, Ron. Then after you, yeah. I was just gonna say it's just that we're living in this era of you know we really want to have these devices to show off on the internet to be like the first person yeah, first. to sort of sh show these off. I could see some dealer trying to take advantage of that hmm. in a sense. So I'm very skeptical that it's real, but I guess I will be proven wrong or right when the pixel is eventually announced like my my brain automatically goes to i don't know if you guys remember and flow this may have been before the time that you were on the show this may have been eileen era mm -hmm. but there was someone that brought on a bunch of knockoff like note clone phones and yeah. they were they were made to look like note phones um you know bought overseas somewhere but they were so obviously not like when you went into the os you know or, or some of them looked like iphones and you know they were so clearly not when you really dove in the, these just like every aspect of it is is un, is believable and pair it seems to pair up with the rumors that we've heard so far also um so if if these are in fact counterfeit Man, bravo to whoever did them because they did a really good job. Like they know how to counterfeit. <laughs> Not yeah. to give someone props for for faking something like that, but um, it's really imp an impressive feat if the, if that's the case. Well, I was gonna say this is a good segue to what those uh, what these leak details of the Pixel Three XL are gonna be. So yeah. we'll, we can we can we can note this here and then compare it on October 9th when Google holds their event in New York City, by the way. Right. Um, but so the leak details currently, as they stand on these wonderful phones, I don't know if we want to throw up a photo of it again, Victor. But the uh, uh, a single 12 megapixel sensor on the rear camera, but updated pixel visual core chip for better HDR plus processing. Um, it's going to have two front facing cameras, one wide angle, one normal for super selfies, quote unquote, super, super selfies. selfies. Uh, that's for flow uh, and not for In face unlock, <laughs> not for face unlock. 
Um, it's going to have a 6.7 inch display as compared to the 6 inch on the Pixel 2 XL, but fits inside a body that's nearly identical to the Pixel 2 XL, uh, which is interesting. Uh, higher res, 2960 by 1440 uh, wireless charging. It's going to have a smaller battery, uh, 3430 milliamp versus 3520. And as we the aforementioned USB-C Pixel Buds included with controls for play, pause, and call functions. Um, and of course, on leaks tweeted out a collection of pro renders of the Pixel 3 family. So if you want to see these renders that show off uh, the notch and the speakers and things like that, we can pull those up um, if we have those, and you can get a sense of what these renders would look like based off these uh, uh, based off these leaked uh, details. So Flo, if you don't think the Ukrainian photos are correct do you think that these details are correct and are these renders closer to what it's going to be i mean sure look, look how um what's it called the effect they're very high resolution you can already see i mean i would imagine that's like close to the kind of quality that we're going to get i mean i see that already with the pixel 2 yeah yeah, yeah they look so you don't believe ukrainians but you do believe on leaks no, I just believe that this stuff is, I don't know what I believe, guys. There's just, I don't believe anything until it comes out of the mouth of babes. And hey, the babes you know what? in this case are Google. That's that's a fair, that's a really fair point. It's fair. I, that's I just, absolutely I fair. I just don't think any of it is real until it comes from the company. And I know that sometimes these things are real, but I, I don't really pay attention to them until it's the official thing because it doesn't really matter what we know beforehand yeah because it really doesn't matter until it gets into the box and it's on the shelf true it's a really valid point. <laughs> so, absolutely valid then we can't change anything right yep. <laughs> though many people based on what we've seen would love to change things namely the bucket the top of the foam bucket, the bucket. <laughs> which, which some people are pointing out is so deep that when you see <laughs> notifications within the bucket, you could you could stack two notifications on top of themselves and it still would <laughs> like fit within that space. That's what I gotta say. If you're gonna have a notch, just go for it, man. <laughs> go for it. Yeah. Go big. Go big or go yep. home. Yeah. Bring that notch down about halfway down into the body of the phone. Yep. Would, yeah. Then you've got two displays on both sides. Anyways, um, you had mentioned, Ron, the October 9th event. Now, that is a yeah. Bloomberg report that's not confirmed by Google yet. We had been uh, talking and guessing that October 4th was going to be the date, namely because the last two years it's been on October 4th. Um, and now Mark Gurman at Bloomberg is saying, actually, mm -hmm. and it was totally like an insert into an iPhone article. It was it was almost like a throwaway, like, oh, and sources say that, you know, the really? iPhone announcement is not going to interfere because it's going to be, <laughs> you know, the Google one's going to be October 9th. Anyways. And uh, so anyways, so I don't know if we know this for certain either. It's all rumory. Sometimes it's fun to talk about rumors. I mean, this seems pretty obvious. I'm just kind of like, if it's really going to happen in NYC, that is a throwing of the wrench. That is a throwing <laughs> a wrench into it, is what I meant to say. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. You're still throwing it. <laughs> yeah. That wrench is still being thrown. It's in the yeah, air. Yeah. It's like, oh, Bay Area? Nah. Why are we going to do it there? Why, and, like, would, why would the wrench be? Wait a minute. Why would the wrench be thrown? They've done a, they've done a New York City announcement before in the past. This is true. This is true. But I, I also see it as like... um. I also see it as like kind of a a different strategy, like a different marketing strategy. I just feel like there's such a difference when you do an event in the West Coast what? versus like the East Coast. What are, what are you yes, talking about? It's like, it's like the difference between doing it in like, oh, we're in San Francisco where all the tech is incubated. But it's like, oh, we're in New York where all like the cool, fashionable people are and design and what are, where people. Are Whoa, I, you know, I adore you, but I don't understand any of this. Like, what is it? I don't know, guys. Okay, hey, I'm just. I, th I think that you see the, that Google has a very large presence in New York as well as it does in the Bay Area. They've got a huge have that big building. They've got a huge building down in Chelsea. Like it, like. And a lot of media is here and a lot of like, it's just like, don't get me wrong. I, we all know I lived in the Bay Area for close to 10 years. I, I love it. And I think it's great. But I mean broadening the horizons and going outside of, of it makes sense. And they've done it before. Like, I don't yeah. think it's that it doesn't adjust the tone of the announcement. An announcement is an announcement. I mean, Samsung clearly had no problems when they did the unpacked event at Radio City Music Hall. Remember? <laughs> 
That True, was true, the- but they had a history of doing it in New York. Any regardless, I mean, it's gonna be a big ass well, event. <laughs> maybe there I, I won't be an event. Maybe that's the thing. I don't know if it's gonna be a big ass event. That's, that's true. The thing. Like, maybe it'll just be an announcement. Maybe it'll just be an announcement. Remember, uh, I, well, I, I think it was. We'll uh, just all get an email from or something that changed this PR. A couple of years ago, yeah. they were gonna have the big event, and instead, they just put out a PR announcement yeah. and announced their devices. And I think it was a uh, one of the uh, a hurricane that was passing through was kind of the, oh, the reason yeah. for that. Oh, that's right. right. So when when things get you know get overwhelming, uh. They uh, they have a history of opting for a PR release. If these leaks are true and we truly know this much about things in advance, maybe that's its own kind of uh, natural disaster in Google's mind, you know, and that they change. <laughs> well, one know. thing one thing is for sure, it's not going to just be an event about. It's not going to just be no. a day about the Pixel. That's true. It's going to be about the whole darn Google Assistant and every like facet of it. And a watch. And, and that's that what I mean assistant. about changing changing the scene because I have noticed a lot of this Google Assistant stuff incubates in the New York office. So I don't know. I'm just, you know, it's just could interesting. Be, that could be it's a part of it. Like, you just spitball. Yeah. yeah. Spitball. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do, I do oh. think they'll do an announcement. I don't know whether it's an event or not, but we're at the time of holiday devices announcements, right? So it makes sense. Yep. So I don't I know. I know real soon. And we'll find hopefully, out. hopefully there's at least some surprise left yeah. for the announcement itself. Can you imagine though, if you if you work on the Google Teams that created the hardware and all these leaks are legit and I'd like, be annoyed. Can you imagine like the firestorm that is going on behind the scenes? Uh, I can't more imagine. than annoyed. That is like that is yeah, that's an insane uh dropping of the ball. I I'd be very curious to know what happened. That's all. I want to know. Uh, hey, Victor, do you have your finger ready? It's time for breaking news, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, okay, hold on one second. <laughs> when I say I want, you say pie. I want pie. I want pie. All right, once again, I was just looking for a reason to play it. But actually, it's kind of breaking news to me. I don't know if it's breaking news to everyone, but I was talking with Leo before the show, and he was like, hey, uh, Steve Gibson had on Security Now a very interesting Android story, and I hadn't heard of it. It doesn't look like anybody's really writing about this. We don't have to go too deep on this because Steve Gibson, uh, I'm sure, did a great job in Security Now. I'm going to watch it after the show tonight. But apparently, researchers have discovered that Android devices are, you know, you've heard this before, vulnerable to attack. But in this in this case, through the use of at commands, you remember those? A-T, like the old... ATDT. Yes. At the at the dial tone. <laughs> All of these old school. They were developed in the eighties. These commands were used to transmit, help transmit data across phone uh, through modems. You know, ATAT is, is a classic ex- example of those. I remember these in my Commodore sixty four days with my Hayes twelve hundred baud modem. Uh, you know what a modem is, oh, right, hey, Flo? Hey, is that before? Yes, I know what a modem is. Okay, all right, all right. I just want to make sure. It always gave me a way that I went on the internet. (laughs) Uh, Apparently, Android phones have similar components, right? Uh, Similar modems inside that can be controlled by these old school commands. More than 3,500 functions on some phones in some cases. Commands control control features like touch screen interface, camera, all facets of the phone can be uh, commanded w- through these a- uh, AT commands. Um, apparently, oh these God. research researchers analyzed more than 2,000 firmware images from all the major manufacturers and found that, you know, th- these phones, you know, w- once these commands are, are thrown, can do a whole number of things that you probably don't want. So this is almost like one of those unintended, like nobody's looking because it's so old. Of course, there's no problem, but apparently there is. Uh, so, you know, I can't believe this. <laughs> this is amazing. And this is now sending me down a rabbit hole of AT commands. Yes, I know. A- yeah. AT. And I just found out, I thought that ATDT meant at the dial tone, but it doesn't. It means AT attention, yep. D dial, T touch tone, and then the number. Yep. Do, 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 then do, 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 ATA to answer. And then, oh my God. Yeah. And then, uh, Oh, I just can't, I, A-T-H-O, like the hook status and like verbose. 
<laughs> oh my god, this is uh, crazy! And who? Why is it on modern phones? That's crazy. <laughs> well, because we got modern. Uh, well, we got modem hardware built into our phones, and I think uh, yeah, along with that true. is legacy. You know, legacy support for all these yeah. things. I don't understand it in the depth that Steve Gibson does, though. So if you want to kind of dive deep, Steve and Leo uh, talked about this on uh, on security now. So make sure to take, check out today's episode. Super nerds need. To, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go listen to that because super yeah. nerds like me who lived on their U.S. Robotics uh, yeah. 38.4 bu uh, Bud uh, Courier <laughs> HST modem. This is like, <laughs> oh my god, this is great. This is such, I love it. Can I just say the day that I upgraded from a 300 baud modem to a 1200 baud modem, I thought, Dude, I thought, I thought it was when moving. Went, when you went from 300 yeah. to 1200, and then 1200 to 24, oh, yeah. and then 24 to 48, uh -huh. and then someone told me you could go to 96, and now I'm at 9600 baud, and then someone tells me you can go to 38.4. Yeah, 38.4. Like, that was a good. That was I a good baud. I skipped 14.4. I did skip 14.4 and went 14, right to 30. 14.4 was a pretty popular bod, but I skipped that 14. one as well. 14.4 was yeah. a pretty, yeah, it was, it was a popular bod. But, but my, my oh my God, my courier, my 38.4 courier HST was like like that long and it was thin and had all the lights. Oh, God, oh. it was so cool. It's when you earned your way onto the internet, people. Heck it, yeah. It wasn't even the internet. It was. <laughs> it wasn't. It, it was a network of message boards that would send your message to every message board it was, on BBSs. It like, was, yeah, oh. it was a system of yes. boards that you yes. could post bulletins to. Yes. <laughs> In fact. Teleguard. Teleguard forever. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that was so, fun. I'm glad to be a millennial. I didn't have to deal with any of that stuff. <laughs> Listen, that's why you take this for I granted. I dial up AOL. Well. <laughs> All this, all this that we have now, yes. Jason and I know how we got I know, here. Yes. I know. <laughs> yes, one one character at a time, slowly across the oh. screen. That's how we got here. We're or, the true or, pioneers. Thank you for blazing the way for the rest of us. We're, we're gonna get we're gonna get to this in the arena, but think about transferring files. You had to go to the DOS prompt. You had to shell out to DOS yeah. and run a command line for the download protocol, Y modem or Z modem or Kermit, and you would suck down your files that way. Compare that to how we live now. It's a much better uh, life. Yeah, it's I'm a much better life. I'm gonna tell you guys, life. it's not much different using a Chromebook to access a Windows network server. <laughs> well, there, <there's laughs> there, are some, there are definite similarities. Uh, you know what? It's <laughs> it's a simpler you. life now. It's a better life now, but I still long for the day. It's, I still look yeah. back on those times. The simplicity of those times, and I miss it. I miss. See, Ron, this is why I was hand coding my website for a while because it just brought me all the feels. <laughs> yeah, takes uh. you back. I love. I love that we that we talked about that story um, and had the chance to dive into history. I mean, it is crazy, and it's also a great way to remind those who are younger than us, all three of us that there are building blocks to the technology that we have today. And there's a lot of stuff that, a lot of stuff that's taken place to get us to where we are now with the technology we have. So be yep. thankful to history. That's right. And we truly do live in the future, uh, so. Yeah, okay. Yes. All right, Flo, you got the email. I do have the email, yay. Okay, we've got an email. So this email is um, from Rog McMahon, McMahon Jr. I hope I pronounced that properly. Rob writes, Pi has made my Google Pixel 1 all but useless, except for phone calls and texts in safe mode. Ouch. Thousands are having the issue and there are numerous posts all over the internet. Google support is telling us we are basically out of luck. Buy a new phone. So Oof. I believe Jason and Ron, mm. we were tweeted about this. Yes, we yeah, were several times by many angry yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. So it is definitely a no thing. Idea. I yeah. had no idea this was an issue. Well, it doesn't seem like a whole lot of people are, are kind of talking about this right now. I mean, outside, outside of obviously the people that are affected. This this falls into that category of kind of challenging because the Pixel 1, how old is it now? It's, well, it's, I mean, it's not two years old, right? It's, it's not still, even two oh, years old. So it's yeah. still kind of within the realm of, it's like borderline on that realm of like, well, wait a minute, at what point is it is it so old? I mean, Google is saying, you know, well, maybe you just need to upgrade your phone. But apparently what people are saying in this particular forum, and we'll have a link to it in the show notes, is that since Pi 
the Pi update on, on many Pixel 1 phones, many people are complaining about these issues. They say before the Pi update, everything was peachy keen. Now, crashing, freezing phone calls are not dialing, not, not hearing any sound. They've tried factory reset. That doesn't help. They've tried reverting to Oreo, and that doesn't undo it, so it still it persists beyond. Uh, safe mode, like Rob said, uh, does work, though, strangely. Google support seems to be pretty unresponsive. They're recommending, like he said, to get a new phone. Some people in the product forum claim that this might actually be a motherboard or hardware issue and to work with you break I fix, which is the company that Google works with uh, to get the motherboard replaced. So, um, yeah, this is kind of, it's kind of news to me, but it seems like a lot of people are having very similar issues along those lines. And that's a bummer. Spooky. And and the answer Spooky. of buy a new phone isn't the best answer you want to hear, especially when yeah. we're on the eve of a new phone launch and it could quickly be accused of that. But um, you got to hope that this is not a widespread problem. I mean, I feel like if it was a widespread problem, we'd hear more about it. Yeah, I guess not not to not to diminish Rob or anybody else's problems with it. Um, but if, if the if the Pixel flagship phones can't handle the new operating system, that's a huge problem. <laughs> yep. Uh, Burke, yeah. Burke here even says, I'm having a couple of those problems, too, on my Pixel XL OG. I was thinking OG. of Burke. Ooh. I was going to ask. And that's the first Pixel ask. XL. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but then again, like, crashing, freezing, like, that's a, that's a thing that happens to a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. It's hard to know whether it's result of Pi. But I think if you if you have a phone and it's working wonderfully and then you upgrade to the latest firmware... Google pushes it and suddenly it updates and, the, you know, from day one you start seeing these issues, you're going to be pretty upset, right? Like, I know I would be upset. I'm like, your update broke my phone and you're not going to do anything about it? Like, it was great beforehand and yeah. now, now it doesn't work. That's that such sucks. a bummer. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I would hate that. So, two things. Yes. One, I hope the Pixel XL that Burke has starts working because that's what I sold to him. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And two, I have to say, I had similar problems updating the Nexus 6P to Nugget. And then that's kind of why I was just like, forget it. I'm just going to buy a Pixel because then I don't mm -hmm. have to deal with what's going on with this phone. And then it right. just sort of died. I wonder if that's so part I'm just, of the plan. I'm wondering. Yeah. Plan, hmm. Planned obsolescence. Planned I don't think it's planned obsolescence. I think... Um, I think there's got to be yeah. convenient, somebody's not convenient to obsolesce. Somebody's not doing your job. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Yeah, convenient to Google obsolescence. Yeah, it's not working. Well, we got a new phone coming out. Just saying. All right, uh, Ron, you got the ad. Yes. All right. We're going to thank our next sponsor. We want to thank WordPress for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. And listen, I love WordPress, hands down. When I needed a website, you know, I had a vision. I knew what I wanted it to be. Uh, I chose WordPress.com because with WordPress, there's no limits. I'm totally free to create the ultimate online hub that was truly mine with room to grow as I aimed higher. It's very motivational. That's okay because WordPress motivates me to make an awesome website. And you too can be motivated and turn your vision into a reality and launch your website on WordPress.com. On WordPress.com, you can choose from hundreds of designs to match your vision and establish your brand. No matter how much design experience you have, or don't have, in fact. I don't have much design experience at all, and I'm able to use WordPress to make great websites. It's hassle-free. WordPress takes care of the hosting, security, and software updates so you can focus on your site. You can upload images, video, audio, and more, plus import and export content to and from your WordPress website. It's your site, your home, your content. So I got to tell you that those import export tools are amazing. If you got a site somewhere else, you can get the content, move it over into your new WordPress site. It's amazing. It works perfectly. Uh, you want to grow your audience and reach new customers with built-in search engine optimization, social media features, and marketing tools. And with the WordPress app, you can manage your site on the go, which is what people like us need. We're out there in the world. We want to update our site. You want to, we don't want to be limited to a desktop. Update it with the app on your phone, and you're, and you're in business. It's fantastic. You can launch your website with confidence, knowing you can get help from a 24-7 support team when you need it. WordPress plans start at just $4 a month. And listen, don't I don't take don't take my word for it. How about you take 31% of the entire internet's word for it? Cuz 31% of the, of all websites run on WordPress. That's amazing. That's dominance people. A third of websites run on WordPress. It's amazing. Uh, and it's a reason cuz WordPress is awesome. So right now get 15% off any new plan purchase. Go to wordpress.com/allaboutandroid to create your website. That's wordpress.com/allaboutandroid for 15% off your new website. 
WordPress.com slash so All About Android. And we thank WordPress for their support of All About Android and supporting our dreams and making websites. Thanks, WordPress. Thank you, WordPress. We appreciate cool. your support always. All right. And now it's time for some difficult wear. It doesn't even make sense for any of the stories that we have in hardware, but <laughs> got to change it up sometimes. Maybe it makes sense. Um, good news, everyone. Magic Leap is finally <laughs> shipping. <laughs> Why, you might ask? Are we talking about it on All About Android? Um, I don't know. Did you guys, did either of you read the Palmer Lucky kind of scribe on why Magic Leap is a, quote, tragic heap? I didn't read it, but I heard about it. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So Magic Leap, Megan obviously. Megan me on it. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's worth the read. It's worth the read through. It's hard to know if it's like sour grapes or, but I, th I think it's actually pretty, his thoughts on it are pretty well reasoned. But anyways, he lays it on thick. He says the hardware doesn't deliver on any of its promises for AR, Ouch. most of it anyways. He says, it, you know, overall the tone is very brutal. Uh, at one point, uh, talking about the, quote, whole new operating system that Magic Leap had touted uh, that they call the Lumen OS, Palmer actually reveals it's running Android with custom stuff on top. The, he says the same approach most people take when they want to claim they have built a whole new operating system. Uh, he likens the user interface to a floating Android Wear watch menu system, which okay. after looking at it, after reading that, I'm like, oh yeah, I guess you're kind of right. Um, so, I mean, I, I guess this just points to the fact that we have to get a magic leap on the show now because it's running Android. Like it's officially something yeah, we can talk totally. about because apparently it's running on Android in the background. But this, but I'm very curious because of all we've heard about Magic Leap over the years and, you know, the curiosity that it is and all of this build up and everything. And now people actually have these devices it's starting to ship out and everything. Palmer Lucky, I feel like, is the only person that I've ever heard mention anything about Android having anything to do with Magic Leap. Even Magic Leap isn't touting this, um, and I don't feel like anyone else is. So I almost want to get it in hand, just to, like see, like, is it actually running Android? Like, how did Palmer discover this, and why is this? I, I don't know. I feel like I feel like That's somebody would be writing about it. It's very strange that there's nothing out there about this. Well, well, but uh, if you look at um I just quickly did a search for Magic Leap and Android, mm -hmm. and uh, what comes up on the first page in Google are uh, 42 Android developer jobs at Magic Leap in Florida. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. I didn't see that. Is that a glass the glass door thing? Yeah, gla a glass oh. door. Oh, yep. oh, wow. Yep. There you go. So, so mm. yeah, ah, you're so, onto something, Ron. I missed that. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it sounds like it's legit, and maybe they just haven't talked about it. Um, and then I just found a post on Reddit on the Magic Leap subreddit where someone's asking what OS is it going to be based on? Is it going to be Android? And two years ago, someone says, yes, there are a number of jobs descriptions on their site that point to using Android as a foundation of the OS. But they never really talked ago. about it. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, they, then, would, they would have to have that team in place. Obviously, they released a product yeah. that's running on Android. So, okay. Yeah. So there's so, some, there there's some uh, legit credi credibility to that. Credibility. Uh, <laughs> uh, cr crud ability, huh? Um, but um, what do we what, what do we make of what do we make of the, the creator of Oculus slamming a competitor though? I know Duncan on the competitor. I mean, like this this seems like I mean I, I get I get that Palmer Lucky is seen as kind of a VR you know kind of a. Whatever you know, uh, visionary or whatnot, and did bring Oculus to the world, and and he he's 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 separated from Facebook, right? He's no longer there. Yeah, he's not there anymore. Yeah, so so he's not. I mean, I imagine he still has some pride as well as some skin in the game in it or whatnot. Who knows? I have no idea. But I I take his criticism of a competing platform with a grain of salt, personally. For sure, I would agree with that. He's also, I think, uh, very, very known to be a big proponent for the future of of VR. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And so, like, I would like to think that he would he would see something that it actually is a vision of the future and be like, actually, that's this is pretty cool. This gets us closer. And I think what he was saying in the article is like, I really want to believe, but what I see doesn't isn't convincing. Uh, I I'm sure that no doubt there's probably some some level of. Uh, like I said, sour grapes uh, in there as well. Um, but he, he, from everything that I've read about him, um, there's a triangulation interview that comes up in, in a month that I recorded a few, a few weeks ago um, 
uh, David Ewalt, who wrote a, a really interesting book on kind of the history of Oculus and VR mm -hmm. and everything. And it really does sound like Palmer Lucky is just at his core, a true like fan and, you know, wants to see VR become this major thing. Obviously he's very invested in it, but so I would imagine if there was something good here, he'd probably share those as well. He didn't really share very much good about Magic Leap. I'm very curious to see it though. I heard, we talk so, about uh, all those uh, dead Gear VR headsets out there. Yeah. <laughs> Before we start talking about the Magic Leap. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, there is the the case that it really seems like VR is kind of fizzling at this point, and yeah. AR was going to be oh, that's that's because AR is going to be the big thing, and right. you know, then then this highly touted you know piece of hardware, the Magic Leap, finally comes out, and it ends up letting people down. The the air is fizzling out fast. Well, I, I've never I've never used Magic Leap. I've never seen it. I know nothing. Um, but what I've heard from someone who has is that eh, it's not not quite there yet. Oh, okay. So, so this this kind of tracks with what I what I've heard in my sources. Yeah. So yeah, um, interesting. Well, maybe we'll get it on the show one of these days. All right, Ron. All right. So I get a lot of people asking me what tablet did I get uh, qu quite often. Ever since – how long have I had that tablet now? It's been a year. <laughs> it's almost a year. Uh, not a week goes by where a member of the Android faithful, the all that Android faithful community goes, hey, Ron, what tablet was that they got? So there are a lot of people who want tablets, clearly. Luckily, Lenovo must have been following me on Twitter. Oh, because, yeah. Uh, yeah. Lenovo dropped a new, uh, a new tablet. Uh, <laughs> and you might want to pay attention to this one. It's pretty interesting. Uh, so the Lenovo Tab E7 – it's a $70 seven inch display. We all love the seven inch display format, by the way, that's small, but anyway. Uh, running MediaTek CPU, Android Oreo Go edition, five hours of battery life, obviously running Android Go, because it's the Android Go edition. Yes. Um, so that's the $70 seven inch one. They've also announced the Lenovo, there's a whole slew of them, so, whole, so strap in folks. <laughs> Lenovo Tab E8, which is a $100 eight inch HD display, with a MediaTek CPU, five megapixel rear camera, two megapixel front camera, Dolby Atmos, 10 hours battery life, also running Android Go, and the Lenovo Tab E10, which is $130. I love these price points. 10 inch HD display, Qualcomm Snapdragon 210 CPU, five megapixel rear camera, two megapixel front camera, Dolby Atmos. All of these are gonna be available at Walmart soon. So this is a, Lenovo is bringing tablets to the people. Um, yeah. They also announced they also announced the Lenovo Tab P10, which is going to be running Snapdragon 450 with four Dolby Atmos uh, speakers, four gig of RAM, micro SD card, 15 hour battery life, also running a, a, a Android Oreo, and the Lenovo Tab M10, a 10 inch HD display with Snapdragon 450, Dolby Atmos, and you can pre order those uh, this winter on Amazon. So Lenovo is doubling down on tablets, folks. What do we I'm make kidding. of this? That that seventy dollars seven inch tablet is is that's 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 quite tempting for the Makes casual sense. tablet user. Heck yeah. Yeah, feels. Uh, I mean, it's definitely that's in the uh, the Amazon Fire tablet yeah. territory there, and it could could be a challenge going up against Amazon in that category because you also get a lot of other things when you get a Fire tablet. Uh, okay. within the Amazon ecosystem, but could be a challenge don't... in the U S yeah. Going up against Amazon, not mm -hmm. so much a challenge elsewhere in the world where Lenovo has a really big brand name. That's a really great point. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So. Um, I, I do think that it's so interesting. We just never hear about tablets anymore. Tablets is just a category that hardly they're, they're happens. They're there. They're at the store. I'm going to the stores and I'm seeing them still on display. They just are not talked about because yeah. They're just cheap commodities now, yeah. I feel like. Just yeah. slap Android on there and a couple of specs and boom, you got a tablet. You got a big screen to watch your Netflix shows on. Your stories. Watch your stories. <laughs> I'm still enjoying the Huawei MediaPad for what it's worth, the one that I yeah. brought here a couple of months ago. Yeah. So. I guess tell you, the, the, the Asus uh, ZenPad uh, treat me well. The, 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 te the I can't remember the name. It's all these numbers. <laughs> the 3S. ZenPad yeah. 10 3S or whatever it is, it's great. 3S, 3S 10. Yeah. yeah, 3S 10. There we go. Too many numbers. Just give yeah. me 10. Yeah, still, still around three hundred dollars for for that tablet. Hey, so. I, but I gotta tell you, one hundred thirty dollars for uh, that tablet is not a bad option, right? Mm -hmm. For the for the the E10, a uh, 10 inch tablet, HD display, mm -hmm. right? That's pretty cool. 130 bucks is not that that ninety nine dollars, hundred dollars is that right price point? I think for tablets to make them work. Yeah, we'll and see. these obviously are not like crazy spec'd out uh, 
devices. But if you're just watching stuff on them, like it's going to yeah. be enough. Yeah. yeah. So I will say, by the way, those Dolby Atmos speakers are legit. Oh, yeah? Oh, are They're they? They're legit. Cool. Yeah. So if you typically the couple of companies that use that spec, like it's it sounds really good for mm. a tablet. Which makes it a really nice like Netflix companion sort right. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Media consumption device. Cool. Yeah. As All an right. aside. Flo, you got the next one. I do have the next one. And then what happened was I put it in front of me in a blank document and then it disappeared. The tab changed. <laughs> Why do you do this to me? All right. So Today, we saw an LG phone come out that has absolutely no bloatware on it. Unfortunately, it's an Android One LG phone. So not only is it limited to certain regions, but it's also limited in some of, slightly, well, let's talk about it first. Okay, so LG has officially <laughs> launched the G7 One running near stock Android. That's Android One we're talking about. It has a measly 32 gigabytes of storage a quad HD plus display, a Snapdragon 835, four gigs of RAM, a notch, because that's the thing we put down now. Uh, and there's no pricing or availability yet. <laughs> yeah. So 835, that's a couple of year old um, processor. Which but, is fine. Yeah. That's For an Android One phone, that's not bad. Yeah. Okay, it's a couple years old. Who cares? You got Android One on there, which is nice and light. Four gigs of RAM, the, so. Yeah, but the 32 gigs of storage is a pure bummer, especially when you have that quad HD plus display and like you just want to catch up on your dramas. And how am I supposed to catch up on my dramas if I have no room to store them? Yeah, that's true. That's, I wonder if there's a micro SD that you can... Um, it's never the same. It's yeah. never the same. <laughs> um, LG also announced the LG G7 Fit. Uh, it's not an Android One phone, but on the inside, there's a Snapdragon 821, 64 gigs of storage, IP68 waterproofing, Hi-Fi quad DAC, uh, which is, you know, LG is known for that Hi-Fi audio quality. And it is legit in this play, in this, uh, in, in LG's case. And also a notch because the notch is, is, I guess, the French beret of 2018 <laughs> for smartphones. It's just the it. The yeah. it thing to have. It's the sassy <laughs> style on, yes. the, on the top of the head of the phone. Yes. So this is all pre ifa stuff. Um, right now, there's a bunch of people showing up in Berlin getting ready for all the big announcements. So there's going to be, as it always stands, there's always all these announcements right after we film all about Android. <laughs> so tune in next week. <laughs> 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 yeah, so yeah, exactly. Everybody's uh, heading off to IFA. Um we actually had a guest uh planned for tonight and he had to he had to postpone cuz uh he had to fly out early for IFA. So so there's going to be a lot more stuff to talk about next week, I'm sure. Gonna, yeah, wise. the IFA, IFA week is always a packed week. IFA so. week. IFA and week. not just smartphones, but also some smart home stuff too. Oh, for sure, more oh. more than anything. I would th <laughs> I would think that e I would look at Efa for smart home stuff more than phones for sure. So I have to say, Efa is very fun because that's where all the cool like the appliances that Europe gets, and so you get to see like all the really how much nicer their appliances are than ours. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's okay. One can they dream. Have appliances that fit in your kitchen. To like wash your clothes anyway. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. You in the mean like a washer? <laughs> yes, but like a tiny one. Oh, but tiny like, one. Oh. Where you're, oh. Yeah, like goes in the, had, in the, you know. Okay, that's the, what I missed. I was like, wait a minute. They've, yeah, had, you could they've had those since the 80s. Like, that's not a new thing. <laughs> I know, but I never see them over here. So I just I say. Yeah, I remember when I went to London for the first time in, in the 90s, I went to my friend's flat and he had the washer in the kitchen. I was like, what's going on in here? And he's like, there's not a lot of space, man. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, makes sense. I guess it makes sense to have all the things it's, that wash things in one room. It's by the plumbing, yeah. It's yeah. by the, yeah, you only need one plumbing. It, here in America where we where land is plentiful yeah. and, we, and we just, we waste space left and right. <laughs> we put our water machines everywhere. Our dishwasher in the kitchen, it's our true. washer upstairs. It doesn't matter But in all us. seriousness, that's IFA. It's just like beautiful show floors of... Uh, Appliances and electronics that Europe is gonna get. <laughs> yeah. The stuff is it's nice. It's very easy to be jealous anyway. of all the cool stuff there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I am. 
All right, Mike Reif writes in to uh, AAAtwit.tv to say, actually it was two emails, it was one and then it was a follow-up, but I think this is this is good information. He says, this morning I restarted my Pixel 2 running Android Pie and got the attached notification indicating that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth may scan for networks and nearby devices, even if Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are turned off. I guess this is just like location being off, where off does not mean off. Next, we will find out that our phones are really not off when we turn them off. And then he followed up to say, I found it in the settings where you can turn the scanning off. Now, is it really off or almost off? And I think if you go into the settings, if you're going to the setting that I think you're doing and you turn it off, then it is really off. But what is this? Actually, if you if you check out last week's, uh, last weekend's new screensavers, I was on with Leo. And we also had another uh, emailer to that show on this very topic. And I think it's something that, that is kind of confusing people along with Pi, this option, this feature was turned on to be on by default. And in Oreo, it was there, but it was off by default. So you had to know that it existed. And it's basically a feature that will automatically scan for open Wi-Fi access points that you've connected to before and that offer a strong signal, even when your Wi-Fi is turned off, so that um, if you're near there and it looks good, it will turn your Wi-Fi on and connect you automatically so that it saves on your data charges. That's what the feature is supposed to do. And some people are noticing if you go into your Wi-Fi preferences and you turn off the feature that says turn on Wi-Fi automatically, uh, that turns off that, that hopping, but it doesn't necessarily stop your phone from automatically scanning for these open Wi-Fi access points. So you actually have to go into another part of settings in advanced under location, and there is an enable Wi-Fi scanning option there. De-click that and then you won't be scanning at all. So just kind of a public service announcement. So I think this is freaking some people out that are upgrading to Pi and they're starting to see this weird behavior of, of scanning even though they've turned off Wi-Fi and it turns back on automatically and that's why it's doing that. A lot of Pi-related freakouts happening. Yeah. yeah. People hmm. people are worried about their Pi. Pi-related pi freakouts <laughs> in the Android world. A lot of pie worry, pie concern. Pie worry, pie concerns. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that helps. Uh, okay, let's take a break and thank the sponsor of this episode, and then we'll talk about some app news. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean uh, provides the easiest cloud platform to deploy, manage, and scale applications with droplets, with virtual machines that are a scalable compute platform, uh, including add-on storage, security, and monitoring capabilities. Ron was talking last night about how he's actually using this for his own projects. Uh, DigitalOcean is awesome. You can choose from standard or CPU-optimized droplets and customize from there. DigitalOcean is actually designed for developers. So there's an easy to use control panel, an API that lets developers uh, spend more time coding and less time managing their infrastructure. Who wants to manage infrastructure if you can avoid it? In industry leading price to performance. You can access the compute resources that you need at the lowest rates, saving up to 55% compared to other cloud providers. And you'll always know what you'll pay per month with a flat pricing structure across all data center regions. And when you sign up for DigitalOcean, when you use the service, you get a bunch of stuff that's included and there's no additional cost for it. 99.99% uptime SLA, you get cloud firewalls, monitoring and alerting, full DNS management, uh, there's global data centers all over, enterprise SSDs, Easy to use API. These are things that developers love to hear. Over 150,000 businesses, including some of the world's fastest growing startups, rely on DigitalOcean to remove infrastructure friction and deliver industry leading price performance. So you can sign up today and you'll receive a free $100 credit. Just go to do.co slash Android. That's do.co slash Android do that, you're going to get a free $100 credit. And we thank DigitalOcean for their support of All About Android. They're the real deal. The real deal. I can attest. Awesome. All right. It's time for some app okay. news. <laughs> that really just kind of sounds like last week's app news and the week before <laughs> app news because apparently news. we can't escape well, Fortnite. 
We got some app news though, but this is great app news because we knew that when Fortnite was going to bypass the Google Play Store, we knew it was gonna be exciting and we knew it was gonna give us thrills beyond our imagination, but we thought that'd be because of the game and how it would disrupt uh, business models and things like that. I did not predict this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Fortnite moving outside the Google Play Store is wreaking havoc, but no ways we ever guessed. Um, its original installer actually allowed for a man in the disk attack to take place on a device. So anybody who installed uh, Fortnite in its original installer was at risk. Uh, when the app called for a download, a rogue app could seize that request and direct it to anything they wanted, i.e. something with a payload, you know, something with a malicious intent. Um, there's a video that shows the Fortnite installer installed via the Samsung App Store, run like normal, then the app data installed as expected, only to reveal it actually installed something different. In the app settings, it shows it has been having installed on the Samsung App Store. So Google audited the software and notified Epic of the flaw. Then they went public with it per their own disclosure policy. And then Epic Games got pissed that Google didn't hold off on that announcement until the update was widely installed as they requested 90 days before public disclosure. Epic went on record saying it was so Google could score quote unquote cheap PR points. So Epic Games versus Google, the fight that we, <laughs> I, I didn't even think this would happen. It's Epic game. It is, this it's is an great. epic battle. So if there ever was, if Google ever had ammo for the point of why to use the Google Play Store, this is why, yeah. right? Like, yeah. would, this have been, would this have been able to slip through the Google Play Store? No, right. because Google vets everything. Well, yeah, and and from what I understand, so so let me read this email from Chuck because um, he kind of <laughs> called us to task. He said, with all the furor of uh, Fortnite not being on the Play Store, I'm surprised that no one on AAA has mentioned the obvious. Fortnite is in the Samsung App Store. This means the largest Android phone share in the U.S. can download Fortnite without turning on unknown sources. I think that you've done a disservice to your listeners by implying that it's only available via sideloading, which is true. That's fair. That's fair. We did not. Fair. We, I was pretty sure that Ron and I mentioned. That it was in the Samsung store. Okay, I, we did. I, if, we did. It was, if you it's did, in the I, Galaxy App Stores, and we definitely mentioned that. All right, if you we, did, we, I we did that for the record. We, we, we did, but to play neutral down the line, we did mention it, but we we really focused on the outside the Google Play Store side of it. So I could see why. So the side lighting. We're both right. We're I mean, both right. But the reality is, in this particular case, it would not have been of any benefit regardless that it was. And it's, in fact, yeah. it isn't. The video that you saw it kind of demonstrates that. It was installed using a private Galaxy Apps API, apparently, which works behind the scenes when you're doing it through the, through the Samsung uh, App Store to make the whole process easier which basically meant that what it effectively did for you, it allowed uh, allowed packages to be renamed the same name as Fortnite, which in this case was com.epicgames.fortnite, that could basically masquerade as the real app and install that malware or whatever the payload is when the Fortnite installer that you got from the legitimate Samsung app store um, was installed and running. So within that app, as you see in the the kind of uh, video that's, that's showing here, you click to download within there. And what's happening at that point is that another app on the phone has masqueraded its own version of com.epicgames.fortnite that has whatever the payload is that inserts in there. And as a user, you just don't know. And the way that that even happened was because it was I mean, partially in this case was because it was delivered via the Samsung App Store. Now, they've made changes. They've updated, like you said, Ron. Uh, one challenge, though, and I, I didn't include this in here, is that Epic Games did mention that, like, an update to the installer doesn't happen unless somebody actually goes into the installer app. That's what, yeah. when you launch the installer app, that's when the installer app realizes there is an update to be made and then makes that update and fixes the hole. I'm not sure anybody's going into the installer app and, and running it again, unless I misunderstood that. Once you run it, you've got the app, the actual Fortnite app running on your phone. You don't need the installer anymore. So maybe yeah. I'm missing something there, but that seems like that's, not very That good. seems odd, yeah. So Regardless, we should probably look at this as more of what's to come from Android device makers, just this kind of like exclusivity in a way to I sort of not. like woo certain, you know, groups yeah. of app users and gamers and players. And it kind of does add an extra 
Frustration, and I know it's a buzzword here on All About Android, but it does add a little bit of fragmentation mm, it to does. the ecosystem that's already so apparent. And this is why it's a problem is because you have Google putting all of these efforts into the Play Store to make sure that like it is scanning apps and there are people who are reading app descriptions and making sure that these apps, you know, aren't malicious and doing weird how, stuff. I mean, does I what is everybody else's stance? I mean, now you've got to keep track of so many different places, so many different sources where you're getting your apps. I, it's just, it doesn't, it, it's not good, Bob. It's not good. <laughs> it's not good, Bob. Not great, Bob. Not great, Bob. It's not great. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Agreed. And now we will never have another Fortnite story on this show again until next week. So you got the next Until next week. Yeah, oh, that's, boy. Fair. that's fair. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so last week I booked my first flight on Google flight. Oh, you it did? was an amazing, easy experience. You've never booked a I flight bo on Google flights. I've never booked a flight on Google. Well, because I, I tend to, you, you know, I've you tend that. to go to, to the website. I usually go to the website and book it directly through the airline. But okay. last week was the first time I booked it through Google Flights to see like if it would really get me the cheapest deal. And it did. It did? Yeah. It did. Oh. It did. I only paid 180 bucks to fly to Portland, which is not bad. It's not bad. Google um, Flights is Google Flights is great. I use Google it Flights is. all the time. I, I didn't even like I didn't even I, I tried it against a different anyway. We're not here to compare it, but I did want to add that I did my first Google Flights booking last week. I will be flying on that flight in a couple weeks, and I'm really looking forward to the whole experience of the transaction being done. Um, and it's also because, you know, we know that Google's really good at tracking flights. So naturally you think you'll get the best, uh, the best deal. And, you know, Google Flights is now doing a price tracking feature rollout, which is based on historical pricing of the current year. So you can get more of a uh, a expanded look on what the pricing is like from your favorite airlines and like the places that you want to go. So it'll show you the low, high and typical price points compared to the price that you're looking at, just kind of based on like an annual view. And it'll also include similar tools for hotels. So you can see like, oh, is this hotel cheaper in March than April? Maybe we should stay at this hotel in March. So, you know, just little ways. I mean, this was always kind of a part of Google Flights is to kind of help you find deals on a spectrum, like whatever your budget was, and then just kind of stay within that budget. But these are just additional features that makes you want to really commit to using this to plan your trips. And uh, Jason did leave a little note in the doc, which I really agree. Wait, isn't this combined with Google Trips? Like, why are we not having Google Flights and Google Trips just be this, like, one-stop travel suite for those of us just want to get away, you know? I don't, I don't even know what Google Trips is. What? That's, that's oh, like okay. Your, so Google Trips is an yeah. app. Yeah. Oh, that's the exploring app, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and it oh, manages no, it all of your, all your, of your It's like TripIt. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like TripIt no, I wouldn't want. Google. I wouldn't want this combined with Google Flights. No. You wouldn't. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's fair. Of course, I don't use it though, but I use Google Flights. Yeah, uh. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm ready to pull the trigger on the on a flight to Kauai. That's three hundred. It's one hundred eighty eight dollars less than usual, according to Google right now. That's really good. So three hundred sixty one dollars round right? trip. I don't know if that's very it's good. Not but that far. It shouldn't be that expensive. <laughs> is that expensive? No, that's really good price. It's three hundred sixty one dollars round. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna pull myself out of out of Hawaii right now. Uh, I'm it's doing hard, a show. <laughs> I don't want to, but I'm in my tracksuit. <laughs> yeah, you're your perfect out Hawaii outfit. Of course. Uh, it's actually cool. too warm in Hawaii. <laughs> I, I forget that Google Flights even existed, to be honest. Um now it's back I, in my room. But I, you know, I don't want to use cut like I never liked using kayak. It was always too busy for me. Yeah. I like to use Expedia because they've they've really ruined my life a couple times. Oh. So you know, uh, I guess Google, Google's another source. Try it yeah. out. Yeah. And then cool. if you want to wait, wait like three weeks until I take my first flight and then I'll tell you if yeah, yeah. like. Well, it's not like it's Google. It's not like it's Google Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> they, they put you in the, the storage compartment. That's your seat. Careful. 
we might be predicting something. You never know the way the world <laughs> yeah, goes. Right. Well, if, if that it does indeed happen, uh, you've got a good article there that I'm sure will catch a lot of steam. So, you know, <laughs> we'll talk about it when you do. Uh, <laughs> of course, at the expense of you riding in the in the storage compartment. So I thought it don't was let that happen. Airlines. Yeah, don't let that happen. But it was Google. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a break. Thank the sponsor of this episode, and then we will get into the arena. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. This is for all of you folks who are thinking about buying a home. Maybe you're thinking about refinancing a home. Uh, you probably already know if you've been paying attention, rising interest rates is happening right now. Things are going up. There's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a new home right now. And that's causing a lot of anxiety with folks. You know, people uh, don't know if now is the right time, if they need to buy sooner rather than later. And maybe they needed to buy yesterday instead of today because things are changing. Well, our folks... Uh, the folks at Quicken Loans are doing something about that. They're calling it the power buying process. It works like this. Quicken Loans will verify your income, assets, and your credit. It only takes you know less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. And when you're verified, that basically gives you the strength of a cash buyer, which in this market, in the housing market, that is the best thing ever. Once you're verified, you qualify for their all new exclusive rate shield approval. Uh, which means first they're going to lock up your rate, whatever your rate is at that moment. Uh, it's going to stay there for up to 90 days while you shop. So now you have 90 days to find the perfect home. You don't have to worry if interest rates are rising. You don't have to worry that the, the interest rate that you were quoted uh, is going to increase. It's going to stay there. And here's the best part. If the rate does go up, your rate stays the same, like I said. But if the rates go down, your rate also drops. So no matter what, either way, you're going to win. It's the kind of thinking that you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, all you have to do is go to rocketmortgage.com slash Android. Rate shield approval is only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Number 3030. That's rocketmortgage.com slash Android. And we thank Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans for their support of All About Android. And now, boom, 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 boom. It's time for the arena. Wow. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. All right, diving into the arena face first. Don't <laughs> slam into the wall while you're skydiving into the arena. Twit.to slash triple A poll 383 uh, is last week's poll. We had four apps in the arena and Fluctuate wins with 42%. Who had Fluctuate? Was that? Uh, the guests did, of course. Of course. Oh, wow. Our guests yes. are really kicking our booties. Jo Josh Vergara comes in uh, with the win for the guest uh, again. Jeez. Uh, we, we need to stop inviting guests on this show. So <laughs> We say on a day yeah, that there's no it. guests. So, so, yeah, so, so Josh was first to fluctuate. I came in second with Shorty. Um, who had type shift? Uh, no, wait. <laughs> No, oh, you know what? You're right. I'm wrong. No, no. Was a, oh, that's Jason. Jason won. <laughs> Jason won. Jason won. I forgot. <laughs> you see, you know why? I looked quickly at the other tab, and Jason, you moved to last. Once I, I thought that was that. <laughs> once I cl once I clicked on the link, I was like, oh yeah, that was mine. I forgot, was and then app. I was embarrassed. Yeah, so Jason wins with fluctuate. All right, yay. Joshua comes in. The guest comes in third with fluctuate, <laughs> and Flo came in last with hold down. Um, okay. So what that does to our our our, our rankings through thirty four weeks, uh, the guests are still in first at one hundred and four points. I'm in second with eighty four points. Jason passes Flo with seventy six points, and now Flo has seventy three points in last place. So there it's are okay. close okay. to. It's okay. 39 points between first place and last place right now. No, that's not right. I can't do it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Three, eight, no. four. Keep talking, Ron. 29. 29 <laughs> points. That's what it is. <laughs> Who can do math? There you uh, go. That's okay. I, I would I, like to say before we move on to our various apps, I did request, even though Shorty didn't win, coming in second is very nice. I did request, request everybody to give it a try for us to try to get his app installs number up from 100 up higher. 
and I checked this morning, and it is it is indeed up to 500 plus installs. Nice. And not nice. only that, many of you left reviews and left comments on the app, all citing oh, heard about no this way. on all about Android, Yay. which was awesome. Yeah, which was like, which gave me so much joy to see this in the morning. If you scroll down uh, there, Victor, you can see. Um, let's see. There you go. Scroll down to the to the the reviews. There you go. Anthony Kelly, and best feature in all about Android. Go to read all reviews. Uh, heard about heard about this from all about Android. If you expand to show more, go to read all reviews. Right there. There it is. Scroll down again. I love I love dictating. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, great app. Would love the easier way to pay the developer. AAA app is great. Heard about it all about Android. Great app. Heard about this from all about Android. That I didn't even awesome. ask you people to do this. That's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice. And then yeah. and then when you're a developer and you wake up and you see that you go yeah, yeah. oh so yeah. So great job everybody on 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 making this guy feel good and feel valued and and hope you continue to enjoy Shorty. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So. That's oh, this great. makes me so happy. I love it. Being cool. happy. Uh, <laughs> so does it make you so happy enough to go first, Flo? Yeah. Okay. Because okay, you, you lost. I did. Uh, so today I brought to the arena. All right. So we've been talking a lot about uh, movie pass and how it's probably going out on the it's going out. And I brought movie pass here this year to the arena. So I felt that it would be my duty to bring you a replacement for movie pass in case you're getting sick of all the news that you're reading about it potentially going the way of the dodo. And you're looking <laughs> for another service that can give you this sort of like, you know, prepay for the movies before you go to them sort of thing. So I've actually been using Cinemia for the last couple of months in conjunction with MoviePass just to sort of compare it for myself. And I, you know, it is an Android app and I have been using it on my phone. I've been using it on my Chromebook to book movies and it's been, it's been great. So right now there's a summer sale going on and I, I promise I'm not here. Just I'm telling you there's a summer sale because you can save more money than I did. Because when I signed up for this service several months ago, I paid uh, I paid $22.99 a month for two movie tickets per month. But right now they have a deal for $7.99 a month. I don't know how long that's going to live for, but they don't have blackout dates. You can go to an IMAX theater and see a movie if you want. Um, you can get advanced tickets. So you just buy this stuff on Fandango because what they do is they give you a virtual debit card. So instead of a physical debit card, you have a debit card on the app that you can access. Uh, the expiration date and the number sometimes changes. So it's not always the same thing, but basically what it is is you paid into a uh, like a prepaid debit card. And then every month you're allotted however many tickets you paid for. There's also a family plan, which is kind of neat so that you can bring somebody with you to the theaters. If you know, you're going out with the kids or maybe you and your partner like to do date nights a couple times a month. Um, that's what my husband and I have been using and it's really great. It's, it's seriously, I am just so happy with the service. And so I wanted to bring it to the arena to just give to anybody who's saying, you know, I downloaded Movie Pass because of the app arena a couple months ago. I'm hearing all this bad stuff. Here is a replacement. Um, the app is not, you know, the best. <laughs> In terms, I mean, sometimes, yes, screens stick a while to load, but it's for Android and um, it's, you know, it's it's there to get you in to watch a movie. And all you have to do is check into the movie before you buy the ticket and you don't even have to be standing right outside the movie theater for it to work. So you can do this all at home from the comfort of your bed until you finally decide to get up and take a shower and go to the movies. Any good That's movies Cinemia. playing right now? What should I, I see? What should actually, I see? Slender Man? <laughs> um, uh, I actually saw Christopher Robin last Friday oh my, with my you, Cinemia did, were, pass. Were you able to keep it together or were you uh, bawling? Uh, no, I was like not. I was. So, uh, so, Jason, every if you, if every, you tap watch. Every time that damn bear opens his mouth. Uh. I know, right? Oh, it was so good. You uh, tap on a, you can tap on Showtimes or you can go back uh. and. Yeah, tap on whatever and then tap watch. Buy a ticket using premium. 
Okay. Oh, well, they I'm, want yeah, you to I'm, I'm not a premium. Plan, so user. I can't show you, but what I'm, but basically what you do is you buy a ticket using premium and that's when you go and check into the time that it's playing the theater you want to go to. And then that basically tells Cinemia, okay, let's release the money to this person who's going to buy this movie ticket. And then you can access the MasterCard that they'll give you. Um, it'll show up on the screen right there where you see the Cinemia card list. That's exactly what it shows up like. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So very cool. It's it's yeah. less fuss than movie pass. You don't have to carry around a physical card. You can do it all ahead of time. I've been booking my tickets and then buying tickets for anybody who's going with me separately. And it's worked just fine. Nothing sold out on us. I've booked things for um I saw a couple indie films at like small theaters in Oakland with this pass. Cause it just works so many places because it's just a debit card. Very nice. I actually like the like the design of the app, but you're right. Things kind of load a little slowly uh, at you know, times. But. And I think they really, the app in the beginning was really awful, but I think they really um, have been working on it because they realized the demand was there with all this new centered around MoviePass. And so, right. and it's, so it's very, I, it's very new, new Android, Google white rounded yeah. button kind of like the, it looks like it fits with Android these days. So it does oh. have cute little filters and things like that. <laughs> if you want to uh. like do branded stuff. Okay. Come on. Um, give, me a filter. Like give me a filter. I'm, Oh, that's my filter. Just, I see. I'm happy. <laughs> Perfect. With the service, you know, Pretty I live cool. in the burbs. I like to go to the movies. That's how we distract ourselves here. And it's great. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you should watch the happy time murders uh, next because it's what's appearing on the screen right now. Uh, cool. Very nice. It's called Cinemia with an S, not a C, yes. right? Uh, cool. Excellent stuff. I like it. So then, Ron, yes. Ron, so, you're up next. So this app, I actually had to look in our little uh, database because I couldn't believe it hasn't been uh, picked before. Uh, it's called Zender, uh, X-E-N-D-E-R. -E and uh, it's, a, it's an app that lets you transfer files from phone to phone, but also from your phone to your desktop. And it's kind of mind blowing. And Jason, I'm gonna if you have it installed, I did, um, or I and thought if, I did, but I'm not seeing uh -oh. it. So talk a little bit. Okay. Well, <laughs> so basically, it. basically, you can transfer any files, um, as they say in the Google Play Store here, without the internet. Um, so you can actually connect to somebody uh, via Bluetooth or via the. You can connect to the phone to phone via the uh, being on the same Wi-Fi network. This is a very cute YouTube video that they have explaining how cute. it works. Um, and it allows you to transfer files very easily. But then what it, what is really interesting about it is that the actual interface of the app organizes all the files on your phone yeah. uh, by photos, music, video, or regular files. And it also allows you to transfer apps, which I've never seen before. Um, but – What's even more amazing is the is the uh, transfer to a desktop, which Jason, I might ask you to pull your laptop into this camera for the for this demo. Okay, but this is a so, pixel book. Does it matter? It shouldn't matter because it's just the web. It shouldn't matter, so we'll find out. Um, but basically, uh, uh, open Perfect. a new open a new tab for, okay. to the, to do that. Um, so before before you do that though, here, oh. look, there you go behind oh, the screen. Oh, wider shot. Oh, hey. There, there you Cool. All right. So let's go, <laughs> right. let's go back to the phone shot, though, because I want to show you guys the app. So here in the app, you can see there the first tab it defaults to is apps. Right. So you yep. can you see all of your apps. If you tap on one, it also tells you how big the apps are. But if you tap on one, you see it kind of there you go. It kind of checks it, says that's the one that you're looking to send. So then just hit the send button. And then what it will do is you have to give it permissions. You have to allow it to access all the stuff and all these things like that. Preparing. And so Boom. now, so now another person using this app just has to scan that QR code, and you guys connect, and it will send the the send the file. Um, it also has uh, options if you're connecting to an iPhone, what to do. So it, it works cross platform. There you go. It explains right there that you connect to a Wi-Fi network that it's making within the app, and then oh, just okay. hit receive, and yeah, it will go in. All local, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All local, and then. Um, uh, Running Android, oh, you need you need your friend to update the latest version to connect with you. That's the one thing you got to be on the same same version side. Right. Um, but let's let's skip past that. Um, so, but neat that they're upfront about that, right? Uh, 
Sure. So now, um, assuming somebody can't transfer that, cool, you can do it. So you can stop sending. Just hit the back button. There you go. All right. So now, um, if you tap on photos, you can see that it looks. It shows all your photos. It shows all your music. There you go. Shows all your music. Shows videos. Shows files. So actual individual files. So basically, it lets you access everything that you've got on there. Shows you new files. It organizes them that way. Um, and then all the way at the beginning of the row, it gives you a history of what you've received and what you've sent. So you can keep track of your transfers. So cool. So easy way to connect to other people and um, and uh, and transfer. You can also start sending or receiving by those little buttons down on the bottom. Hit send, and it will prepare to send, and it prepares that if you go back. Um, hit the back button again and stop. Hit back again, or cancel that. There you go. Stop sending. If you turn on receive, hit receive. It's basically looking for another person using Zender who's sending, basically. So pretty nice. neat. So just hit back. So now, um, if you need to share the app, there you go. You beat me to it. You hit that little lion, and this is how you can share the actual app to another phone. So you do need on both points. You both need Zender to be there. So J Jason, if if you were with me, you can say, "Hey, just scan this QR code. You can install it. You can share it via other invites, or you can um, uh, use Bluetooth or your hotspot to invite, which is pretty cool. cool. Now this is where the magic happens, though. So if we go in the upper left hand corner, or hit back. And go in the upper left-hand corner and hit the little uh, – yours is a lamb. Mine is a cat. Um, and you get the menu. Um, tilt the phone a little. I got a glare, Jason. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. There you go. Um, okay. Uh, so you see um, you see some information about the number of files, the number of people, the number of bytes and things like that. But if you hit the more button down, down at the bottom of the menu, you can see connect to PC. And so now I tap connect to PC. And it's just the same way that we use Allo or WhatsApp to scan a QR code on the browser. Mm. So, Jason, if you go to web.zender.com on your laptop there, we're going to show everybody how this works. Okay. I went there on my laptop. Okay. Scan. Now scan that QR code. Scan. Allow. Scanning. Okay. So now this is where things get crazy. <laughs> This says, first time connecting to your PC, click start to take a tour. Yeah. <laughs> so you can skip the tour or whatnot, okay. or you can hit All start. Right. It will show you. But basically, this now is giving you a desktop access to all the files on your phone. Ah, oh, okay. Nice. Not only that, you can drag and drop files from your computer onto your phone via this interface. Yeah, very nice. It's, ma it's, it's honestly, it's magical. It's magical. So yeah, pretty cool. So Zender makes it real easy for you to transfer files to friends or to yourself between your phone and your desktop. It's a great way if you don't use Google Photos, it's a great way to pull photos off of your phone. Um, if there are special files you want to put on, if you need to put on work stuff, PDFs or anything like that, instead of emailing them to yourself and putting them in Drive, having to download them, all that sort of stuff, it's just a direct drag and drop right into your phone. Nice. Love pretty it. amazing, right? Pretty cool. That's pretty great. So Zender, X-E-N-D-E-R, free in the Google Play Store. Um, apparently it's popular in India. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> All the people that are voting for your app then, uh, yeah, basically. You know? Let's hope. It's amazing. <laughs> so there it is. Z Zender. Zender. Um, oh. Awesome. Very good, Ron. Love it. X-E-N-D-E-R, Zender. All right. So I'm going to show off an app that's uh, pretty easy and recognizable, let's say. There's an app called Rootless Pixel Launcher. Okay. This actually used to be an, this was an app. Well, that let you me guess, it's a, it's a game. <laughs> no, but oh, it okay. should be because that sounds like a fun game. How to install a launcher on your phone. I could see it be a, a puzzle game. Um, <laughs> so... Rootless Pixel Launcher actually has been around for a while, but you couldn't get it through the Play Store. And basically, they've made changes so that you now can. And what is it? So right now on my on my Samsung Galaxy Note 9, you're seeing the normal uh, Samsung launcher. I'll go ahead and go home. And I'm going to switch over to Rootless Pixel Launcher. And basically, what I have now, I have a true Pixel Launcher on here. This is based on the Android Open Source Launcher 3. That's the base behind the Pixel Launcher and so many other launchers, essentially. Uh, but it's merged with 
decompiled pixel launcher sources. Launchers, um, I actually showed off on episode 339 and it won in the arena, the lawn chair launcher. It was based on this source. Uh, and before now, you couldn't actually have this particular base in the Play Store because it was using the original Pixel, Pixel Launcher's uh, package name in order to do things like make the Google um, feed on the side work the way people expect it to and that sort of stuff. They had to kind of trick it by using the same name uh, on some of those things. Uh, this version is now in the Play Store because it actually removes that name. So it removes the thing that would keep it from the Play Store. But what happens is when you launch this for the very first time, you end up getting a pop-up to do an in-app download of something called the Rootless Pixel Bridge. And that ends up bringing over um, the components that are required for it to essentially be the Pixel Launcher, but on any phone that you happen to be running. It's completely open source, so this actual launcher can become the base, uh, as it has been uh, for other launchers already. Um, and, yeah, I guess this also means that when Google changes their APIs, it's going to continue to work fine uh, based on this. So if what you're looking for is kind of to have... Uh, the Pixel Launcher on whatever device you have, it almost, it, in you know many ways, it kind of turns this into an Android One f phone based on you know the Pixel UI. Let's say it's Google's UI. It's it's straight from uh, you know their open source uh, library, and uh, it you know it runs exactly how you would expect it to. So I just thought it was kind of neat that it's now in the Play Store. It's now even easier to get. Um, although I will warn you, do not download this on a Pixel device. Because it actually will interfere with some of the on-device pixel mm. launcher components. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's possible to undo that, but don't test it. I didn't test it myself. Uh, but you wouldn't need to anyways. You already have the pixel launcher on your pixel phone. Uh, but if you don't have a pixel phone and you want the pixel launcher, this would probably be as, as close as you get to that. It doesn't have the bells and whistles, though. It's not like a Nova launcher where it can look like it, but it also adds all these extra features. It's straight up just the pixel launcher on any device that you want. Uh, so do a search for Rootless Pixel Launcher. When you launch it, it'll uh, it'll cue you to download the extra component, the, um, what do they call it? The Pixel uh, Launcher uh, Bridge, I think it was, a oh, Rootless Pixel Bridge. And then uh, everything will work as you expect it to. And that's that, Rootless Pixel Launcher. All right, it is time. Ruthless? Ruthless. Not ruthless. I was hoping you would slip and say ruthless the whole time. <laughs> I just realized I did not post the poll. I have now posted it. Let me create the shortcut, and then I will deliver it to you in the form of words that I speak. <laughs> and, all right. Twit.to slash triple A poll 384 is where you go to place your vote for your favorite app this week. Is it Rootless Pixel Launcher, Zender, or Cinemia? Place your vote at twit.to slash triple A poll 384. I think Victor is going to go Cinemia. Oh, Zender. Zender. Oh. <laughs> he went with the Zender. Awesome stuff. We'll check in on this next week and see where it lands without a guest on today's episode. I have a feeling we'll yeah. all be just a little bit further along. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to propose any shenanigans, but we've got – four months left or so in the year, the less guests we book, the better chance we have at catching up, jo oh. uh, Jason, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Uh, the mm. <laughs> Don't say that because then if, if I ever have episodes where I have it, like have something fall through, then people are going to just call shenanigans okay. right off the top. <laughs> they, they might just already do that. But uh, I, I don't know. It's hard to think that the guests won't win this year. They're so far out ahead. Anything's possible, I realize. But this really seems like the year of the guest. The year of the guest. It's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. Uh, we have reached the end of this show, and we always appreciate you guys watching uh, watching us talk about Android and say many silly things along the way. And I always appreciate having Flo and Ron side by side, even if they aren't here in person, in TVs, in TV form. Thank you both <laughs> for, for joining. I still put on my velour for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> 
Uh, Flo, we'll start with you. What other than wearing velour, uh, <laughs> what uh, what you got going on? I just want everybody to know this came from Costco. It was a good deal. Um, so I want you all to know that first. Second of all, I want you to know that I've started writing for uh, AndroidPolice.com. Nice. So cool. if you've got, right now I've got a story up about the Chromebook that went up over the weekend about Android apps on the Chromebook. If you want an idea of where to start looking in the Play Store on your laptop. Um, I'm hoping to have more stories coming out in the future. If you have a question that you want answered by me specifically, you can go to florencelion.com and use the ask form to send me an email that lands right in my inbox. So just reminding, yes, I haven't blogged there in a while, but the ask button is always there for your use. So please, please use it. Uh, submit a question. As long as you're not pitching me, I will read it. Hey, even <laughs> if you're pitching, you might accidentally read it and then be like, dang it, I read it. Maybe maybe you read it and, and you won't realize like, you won't realize it's a pitch until it's too late. Yeah. Yeah. The good pitch emails make it seem not like a pitch until suddenly right. you realize. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Thank you, Flo. Site's looking good. Thank you. Uh Ron, what about you? Yeah, so you can go for I don't have a site. I mean, I do have a site, but I never I don't do anything on it anymore because I'm busy. Um, but go to uh, twitter.com slash ronxo or Instagram uh, at ronxo. And that's where you can see uh, I go to a lot of baseball games, apparently. There you go. And I post a lot of nonsense on the Twitter. So uh, there it is. That's what Twitter's um, for. And today, today is Jack Kirby's birthday, one of the greatest comic artists ever. So there you go. You can go, you can go celebrate Jack Kirby's birthday. Click the link on my Twitter profile and you can enjoy that. So there you go. That's all. Thank you, I got Ron. Stuff, I, got, I got some fun stuff cooking still. I know earlier I know. in the year I said I was going to announce a couple of projects. One of them might be coming sooner rather than later. Not the one you're thinking of, Jason, oh. but the one you're thinking of, Jason, is making very good progress, and I hope to be able to talk about it soon. <laughs> These so. things are cooking. Cool. It smells really good at this point. I'm using, I, like, I'm using we're on Digital Ocean. It's great. It's fantastic. It's I like see builds. My developers are working. Yeah, it's, it's, it'll get there. It's simmering. Simmering. <laughs> simmering. A slow boil. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Uh, Victor, thank you. Once again, for joining and, and helping out and, and doing all the, the hard work. No problem, man. Because it's not easy doing what you do, and we really appreciate it. Uh, and as for me, if you want to find me on the internet, you can uh, right here on Twit, twit.tv, doing a bunch of shows. Actually, Leo is leaving in a couple of days. I think tomorrow is his last day on the network, and then he's gone for like almost a month. Not quite a month, but he's going. They're they're going for a nice long vacation. So while they're away, I'm I'm filling in on security now. I'm filling in on this uh, this week in Google, and I'm doing a couple of new screensavers. We're gonna be busy around here, so definitely check it out here, uh, twit.tv uh, to tune in on all that. And if you want to find me personally on the on the web, you can at Jason Howell on Twitter and yellowgoldmusic.com is my site where you can find my music and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, just a quick reminder, best ofs, it apparently is that time, and I really appreciate it. If you want to submit uh, moments from the year, uh, you can, twit.tv slash best of. I think that's about it. Uh, leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Send us emails, AAA at twit.tv. Find us on Twitter. We're at Android Show. Arena Apps List can be found at twit.to slash Android Apps. Uh, show notes and past episodes can be found on our awesome home on the web at twit.tv slash AAA. Uh, you can go there and subscribe, find all the information about all of our episodes, start with episode one, and become an expert on Android. <laughs> We're like a, a class for you, an online class. <laughs> uh, and if you want to watch us live, you can. You can email tickets at twit.tv. We had an awesome uh, gentleman in here just a little while ago watching. He had to bail early, but... Thank you for coming in and making us feel important. If you want to watch you can, live in studio, you can. Tickets at twit.tv, or you can find us live every Tuesday on the internet at 5 p.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live. That's it for this week. We'll see you all next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everybody. Bye. Practicing my waves.